Hello everyone and welcome to today's Mondac webinar in association with SLC LEX who will be providing an insightful webinar on how Italy is becoming the main reference hub in Europe for the mobility of high net worth individuals. My name is Dan Sampeo and I'm joined by a brilliant panel to take us through today's discussion. Chiara Gandini, Senior Associate of SLC LEX and full member of STEP, is enrolled in the Milan Bar Association since 2011 after having graduated in law and after a second level university master in oil and gas law and economics. She predominantly deals with civil law, trust, successions and wealth planning, corporate law, with a particular reference to M&A and extraordinary transactions, as well as international contracts, assisting clients either in judicial or in out-of-court procedures. Luca Bisconti, associate of SLC LEX and future full member of STEP, has been a member of the Milan Bar since 2022. He graduated in law from the University of Milan Bicocca, and he has gained experience in trusts, succession, estate planning, and international tax law. Elisabetta De Rosa, advisor of SLC LEX, has two degrees in law and business from LIUC Carlo Cataneo University in Castellanza with full marks. Her practice focuses on trust and wealth planning, compliance, and commercial law. Stefan Valente, advisor of SLC LEX, graduated from the University of Milan. He provides assistance in corporate, commercial, civil, tax and international law with a particular focus on immigration and visa matters. Now, before we begin today's webinar, a housekeeping item, you can submit questions to the panel by typing them into the questions pane of the toolbar on the, on the right hand side of your page. And we do encourage you to get those questions in. We will endeavour to answer as many as possible. It's now my pleasure to hand you over to Stefan to begin today's session. Stefan will speak about the different types of visa that allow foreign citizens to enter and work in Italy. Stefan, the floor is yours. Good day, every, good day everyone. Today I'm here to discuss the intricacies of the visa system that governs entry into the Schengen area with a particular focus on, on Italy. As we know, the visa is a crucial document uh, for international travel, serving as an authorization granted to the foreigners to enter into the Schengen area and the Italian Republic. In this context, we can say that the visa for Italy is a, a special sticker affixed to the applicant's passport or other valid travel document. Uh, the Italian visa system recognizes uh, 20 different types of visa and uh, we can uh, divide the, the, the visa in two main types, the uniform Schengen visa and the national visa. Uh, the, national, uh, the uniform Schengen visa is intended for transit or short stay until 90 days and this type of visa allow the older to travel not only in, uh, in Italy, but also across uh, the other countries that apply the Schengen, the Schengen Convention. The national visa is uh, designed for long stay exceeding uh, uh, 90 days. Uh, this visa allows the older to stay in Italy for more than 90 days and allow the older uh, free movement within the Schengen area for up to 90 days per, per semester. We can go to the, uh, the next slide in, in which we will explain the details of the single uniform Schengen visa. We have six different types of uniform, uh, uniform Schengen visa, business visa, sport competition visa, uh, visa by invitation, transit visa, transport visa and tourist visa. Business visa allow uh, the older to travel in Italy for economic and commercial purposes. Sport competition visa allow uh, the older to participate in sports events organized by recognized national sport federation and uh, it supports uh, both professional and amateur participants. Visa by invitation is issued 
uh, two foreigners uh, invited by uh, well-known bodies, institutions or, organi or organization to attend specific events uh, that have a political, uh, culture nature. Uh, transit visa uh, allow uh, a foreign national to across through the territories of the Schengen countries during a journey from one third state to another. Transport visa uh, permits short term stays in Italy to carry out professional activities related to the transportation of goods or persons and tourist visa uh, uh, allow the older uh, to visit Italy and other Schengen countries for tourist purposes. For this, uh, we can say that uh, our uh, visa system recognizes uh, six different, uh, as I said, uniform Schengen visa with specific uh, purposes for which uh, a single uniform Schengen visa can be issued. Uh, regarding the national visa, we can go on the next, uh, next slide. Regarding the national visa, uh, our uh, visa system recognizes uh, uh, six different types of visa. Visa for adoption, diplomatic visa, re-entry visa, visa for elective residence, working holiday visa, investor visa. As I said, the national visa allow uh, the older to stay in Italy more than 90 days and uh, uh, to uh, allow to, to older free movement uh, within the Schengen area for uh, up to 90 days per semester. Uh, now we will uh, uh, examine the, the details of the single, the single national visa and we will start from visa for adoption uh, that uh, uh, facilitates the entry of foreign children adopted or fostered for adoption by Italian parents. Uh, diplomatic visa allow an indefinite say in Italy for those destined to serve in their country's diplomatic consular representation in Italy or at the old sea. Re-entry visa is for foreign nationals who already hold a valid residency permit in Italy but find themselves, themselves uh, without these documents due to expiration or incidental lose. Visa for elective residents uh, allow the, the, the foreigners uh, to uh, settle in Italy and to support themselves without engaging any work activity. Uh, working holiday visa is part of bilateral agreements between either Italy and specific countries, allowing young nationals of these countries to live in Italy uh, for an extended period and engage work to support their, their holiday. Uh, and then we have the investor visa uh, that can be issued to foreigners who intend to make a specific investment in Italy and uh, um, our visa system recognizes uh, four different type of investment. Government, government bond issued by the Italian Republic for at least two millions uh, uh, euro, uh, shares in Italian limited companies for at least 500,000 euro, uh, shares of innovative startup for at least 250,000 euro, and philanthropic donation uh, to public benefit uh, project in the fields of culture, development, uh, research uh, of at least uh, 1 million. Uh, we can go on the next slide uh, in which we will see uh, a specific type of visas that can be issued for both short and long stays, depending on the applicant's needs. In particular, we have eight different types of visa, uh, visa for medical treatment, visa for self-employment, subordinate work visa, visa for mission, visa 
or for religious reasons, research visa, student visa, and volunteer visa. Regarding visa for medical treatment, uh, this visa is granted to foreigners needing medical treatment at accredited Italian healthcare institutions. Uh, visa for self-employment allow individuals intending to carry out a professional or no subordinate working activity in Italy. Uh, subordinate, subordinate work visa issued for both fixed term and open-ended work contract. This visa, uh, de facto, uh, facilitates entry for foreigners called to Italy to engage in subordinate work activities. Uh, visa for mission is uh, issued in favor of uh, foreigners uh, that come to Italy for political or public function. And this visa supports both short and long term stays based on the mission requirements. Uh, on the next slide, we can see uh, the last four uh, types of visa, a visa for religious reason. And this visa accommodates a minister of religion who wish to participate in religious events or uh, activities in Italy. Research visa. Uh, that uh, is issued uh, in favor of uh, uh, foreigners uh, that call to Italy by university or research institutions. Um, a student visa, that is, that is a visa issued in favor of student who wants to come in Italy to attend a specific university uh, in Italy. And volunteer visa allow uh, young individuals to participate in volunteer programs in Italy for up to one, one year. We can go on the next slide in which uh, we will explain the benefits, uh, the benefits uh, according with the uh, issuance of, of the visa of long-term residency in Italy. In particular, acquiring a long stay visa in Italy, uh, the older, uh, the applicant has the option of transferring uh, the, his residency to Italy. This, this transfer brings uh, with it a significant benefits. In particular, uh, the older can uh, acquire Italian citizenship after 10 years of residency in Italy, and uh, the applicant acquires the right to obtain Italian citizenship, and for this he, will, he can ask the issuance of Italian passport. And uh, with the transferring of the residence to Italy, the applicant automatically uh, will become a fiscal resident in Italy. The status allow access to beneficial taxation treatments, such as the regime for impatriate workers and the regime of res non dom, which can provide sub substantial financial advantages. Uh, this regarding the situation and the Italian visa system. Uh, thank you for your attention. And now I leave the floor to my colleague Chiara Gandini, who will explain tax residence in, in Italy. Thank you, Stefan, for such an interesting uh, speech and overview of the visa regime. Uh, we, as anticipated, we will uh, now explore uh, the uh, new principle of uh, the Italian tax residency. Uh, if, uh, thank you. Um, the, um, this, is, this section uh, will be starting by analyzing the, um, the new principle as recently reshaped for tax residence purposes. And then I will uh, um, um, analyze uh, the consequences of being or not being um, residents in Italy for tax purposes. For we'll finish up this uh, section, um, catching a glimpse uh, with the, the income tax structure. So let's start by focusing so on the new principle of the Italian tax residency. The legislative decree uh, 209 uh, of December 2023 has modified the principal ruling the tax residence of individuals. 
So uh, as amended in Article 2 of the uh, in Italian Income Tax Code, um, this uh, article starts by um, uh, expressing the concept that uh, uh, either uh, Italian tax residents or not Italian tax residents can be levied by income taxation. Uh, and uh, under Article under, uh, Article 2, Paragraph 2, which is a paragraph that has been amended, um, the, uh, the Italian, uh, the individuals uh, um, from January uh, 1st, 2024, individuals can be considered as Italian tax residents if for the most part of the fiscal year are alternatively, because these criteria are alternative one another, have the residence in Italy, according to the Italian civil code, have their domicile in Italy, according to the Italian income tax code, Article 2, or are physically present in the Italian soil, or are registered in the resident population register. Let's start by focusing our attention on the aside for the most part of the fiscal year. This aside is essential and fundamental um, since we have to consider that for the, main, the most part of the fiscal year, we have to consider, first of all, the fiscal year starts from January 1st and ends up on uh, December 31st. And uh, so when we um, uh, approach the, the uh, most, the concept of the most part, we are speaking about 100 and more than 183 days or 184 for the year. Um, and we have also to stress the fact that in Italy, it is not possible to be simultaneously for the same fiscal year, Italian tax resident and Italian not the tax resident. In our system, in other words, uh, there is uh, the concept of no split years. So apart from some exemption, which are the uh, agreements in place between Italians in Switzerland and Italy and Germany, um, the, uh, if uh, an individual falls within the uh, one of the criteria I have just mentioned uh, uh, for, uh, re for fiscal resident purposes uh, for the most part of the year, then he will be considered tax Italian tax residents for the whole year. Um, and, uh, um, the clock will reset every fiscal year. Let's now see uh, in, uh, in details every, every criterion. If uh, is it possible, please, next slide. Okay, thank you. Residence. The um, residence is the first uh, criterion uh, mentioned by Article 2 of the Income Tax Code. Um, and uh, the um, the article uh, makes uh, express references uh, to uh, the uh, civil uh, description of the concept of residence, uh, which is uh, provided by, for by Article 43 of the Italian Civil Code. The second paragraph of this uh, provision um, foresees that uh, the residence is the place where individuals have their hab habitual abode. What does it mean, habitual abode? It means uh, it, it expresses a concept of a permanent home, uh, the, 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 the location uh, where, uh, for an individual perspective, is considered as uh, the place uh, where um, he will always come back, uh, even after a uh, long um, uh, staying away. Uh, this uh, concept and this definition gravitates around the intention to make uh, such place uh, the permanent home for such individual. Then we have the second criterion, which is the domicile. This uh, uh, criterion is being modified and amended by the recent tax reform. So from uh, January 1st, 2024, it is uh, no more relevant uh, the, uh, the concept uh, uh, that was in place uh, on the uh, former version. The former version uh, recalls uh, two different uh, um, uh, elements um, that were um, in, in essential for 
defining the, the, uh, the content of the domicile. Uh, the former version uh, ref referred to both center of affection and uh, the business center. Um, in and the current version of the article, uh, there's no more referral to uh, the civil code definition, but uh, the content is included within Article 2 of the Income Tax Code, and uh, it is expressed as the place where the individual's personal and family relations are primarily conducted. The uh, legislator has hence made a specific choice, get, giving a, a predominant relevance to the concept of the center of affection of the familiar and the personal affairs, which are uh, more important and more relevant and take precedence over economic and business interest. Next slide, please. Um, for uh, concluding uh, the domicile concept, uh, I want uh, uh, to make an example. Uh, in case uh, a person has uh, his family, his family affairs, uh, his, all his family's members are located, for example, in a town in Italy, but uh, he has uh, a full-time uh, employment uh, uh, contract abroad, for example, in Switzerland, as many um, people have in, in Lugano, uh, for Italian tax purposes, it will be considered um, resident in uh, Italy and not uh, in Switzerland. The physical presence criterion, which is the third one, is a totally new one, uh, and uh, it is a very delicate one, um, since uh, uh, it uh, counts the uh, mere physical presence of a person for more than 183 days on a fiscal year to be considered that individual as Italian fiscal resident. And um, it is also to be, to be stressed that a fraction of uh, the days are considered as whole days. So uh, it, is, uh, uh, it, it, it counts a few minutes of presence in, uh, in, in the Italian soil to be considered this, uh, this, the whole day as part of the 183. Uh, the days uh, for, uh, for of the presence in uh, in, uh, in Italian soil must not be consecutive, and uh, uh, giving the the, the, uh, the content of uh, this new criterion, it would be strongly advisable to keep records uh, and uh, of all uh, the uh, documentation attesting the effectiveness and the concrete presence of this individual. Uh, uh, in uh, the Italian soil, such as uh, uh, train and flight tickets, uh, board and pass, uh, uh, restaurant receipts, uh, and any other documents that can validate the, the, the physical presence of the individual. This uh, could be um, uh, useful for opposite purposes, for example, in case of uh, um, contestation by the Italian Fiscal Authority of the uh, residence uh, uh, of uh, this individual, uh, this uh, documentation can be um, uh, useful, uh, productive for uh, and produce for contesting and challenging the contestation, or on the opposite, uh, to uh, contest the Italian residences for validate the residence uh, uh, of the such individual abroad. The last criterion is the registration at the, the General Register Office. Uh, first of all, we have to consider that this criterion is uh, um, shaped as a presumption and in specifically a, as a rebuttal presumption. So it could be overcome by giving a, pro a proof to the contrary. Um, it, uh, uh, for uh, the, the, the tax authorities, it is uh, um, the mere instant recording of a person in a, a registry, in the registry of the general office, for a, be considered as Italian fiscal resident. Um, this means that uh, uh, it, uh, uh, in case you do not want to um, be considered and so to win to overcome this presumption you would have to uh, produce as for the previous criterion examine um, documentation attesting the not presence in this case or, the, of, or to the italian soil 
how it works at the registration. It is uh, um, based on a self-declaration by filling a specific form to be um, um, delivered to the municipality uh, competent, uh, territorial competent, uh, where um, your property is located. And you have to show uh, to have a disposal, a, a house, a property. And uh, the reason and the right behind this, this uh, disposal, uh, such uh, as uh, the notarial deed for purchase uh, the, the, the building or uh, the rental agreement that you record it uh, in, the, in the records of, uh, at the fiscal authority, or any other such as a contract, such as accommodation um, um, agreement. It uh, um, has to be considered that, that uh, after the, 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 the submission of the application, the municipality uh, would conduct checks. Okay. These checks can be background check on the correspondence between the documentation attesting the disposal of the, of the property and the ones at the records and the fiscal authority as well as other checking uh, place. Uh, it is um, often possible that uh, the local policeman gets uh, the property to check if the person is uh, effective present there. And in case of missing, it could, the application could be rejected. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as a completion of uh, this overview of the, the, the tax residence principle ruling um, the, 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 the MET in, uh, under our system, uh, we would like to finish by um, stressing the fact that uh, the reform hasn't amended the last part, the last paragraph of Article 2 of the Income Tax um, Law. Uh, this article provides that Italian citizens who have been removed from the civil register and transferred to blacklist countries are considered Italian residents unless proven otherwise. Next slide, please. Um, now we will explore in, uh, in short, uh, in a nutshell, the consequences of being Italian tax residents versus not being Italian tax residents. Well, uh, our system is based on the principle of worldwide taxation. So the income uh, generated in Italy as well as generated abroad would be uh, relevant uh, for tax purposes under our system. So uh, the, uh, the whole, uh, worldwide income and gains received during the, the year, the fiscal year at stake, would be um, tax taxed. Of course, for the income generated abroad, uh, double tax treaty in place between the country, um, the other country and Italy have to be uh, taken into account. Um, the um, Italian tax residents uh, would also uh, um, um, burdened by um, reports duties of all the assets that he has worldwide. Instead, uh, an Italian non-resident, non-tax resident, would be generally liable to uh, Italian tax only on the income generated in Italy. For example, in case of an employee for the income generated by the employment contract. In the next slide, we have paste an example of a sample of an attestation of residences. This is a certification that attests the tax residences of an individual and is uh, is uh, issued by the Italian uh, tax authority uh, after uh, a specific application of the individual and uh, it aims to be produced uh, to the foreign tax authorities for being um, granted by the benefit of the double tax uh, um, agreements. Um, and uh, um, we will finish this overview by um, looking at the structure in the next slide, of the income tax, Italian income tax. Um, first of all, our, um, we have to consider that uh, the, um, the gross income of an individual is calculated uh, as the sum of 
in six categories of income. We have employment income, self-employment income, real estate income, business income, capital gain, and investment income. Um, the income generated worldwide for an Italian uh, tax resident would be taxed uh, by IRPEF, which is uh, the income tax. This uh, tax is a direct one and progressive. From uh, the fiscal year 2024, uh, the, uh, the brackets of uh, taxation have been uh, amended, and from uh, four brackets, now we have only three brackets um, that uh, um, change from uh, the, uh, the the threshold of the income generated. The first uh, uh, threshold is up to 28,000 and has a, a, a rate of 23%. The second bracket is from 28,001 up to 50,000 with a 35 rate. And then we have the last bracket, which is from EUR uh, 50,000 and more with the 43 rate. Now I will uh, uh, give the floor to uh, my colleague who will uh, um, uh, explain uh, and uh, the uh, some strange exception uh, from uh, the um, uh, tax residency system uh, and the principles that we have on uh, general terms just analyzed. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Cara. And uh, as you said, uh, the REST non DOM regime uh, that was introduced uh, in the 2017 Italian budget law is an exemption to the ordinary tax uh, residence rule in Italy. The REST non DOM regime is intended for individuals who want to move their tax residency to Italy. And the main known advantage consists in the possibility of paying a flat tax equal to 100,000 euro for each year in which the option is valid on all the income generated by the individual outside Italy. In this general overview, we can say that the main starting point to enter into the Res non dom regime is the transfer of, tra of residency in Italy. Res non dom regime is allowed both to foreign and Italian citizen but only under the condition that they had their fiscal residency outside Italy for at least nine of the last 10 fiscal periods. The maximum duration of the regime is 15 years, and is it possible to extend the regime to one or more family member, as we will see ahead. On the other side, it is not generally possible to combine the facility under the rest of the regime with other tax regime. If we can change to the other slide, please. We will see the income that are included and excluded from the regime. Generally speaking, only the income generated outside Italy will fall into the REST non DOM regime flat tax. Income generated in Italy is always instead uh, taxed under the ordinary IRPEF rulers, rules that Chiara uh, has explained. In the, in the slide, you can see the different type of income that are included in the regime with uh, some uh, uh, exemption that are uh, two mainly. The first one is uh, the capital gain resulting from qualified participation held in companies outside Italy made during the first five tax period of application of the REST non DOM incentive. In fact, this type of capital gain are not subject to the substitute tax. And therefore, uh, this gain is subject to the ordinary tax provided by Italian law for capital gain, that is a flat tax of 26%. However, uh, as uh, written in the slide, is it possible to arrange uh, a proper tax planning about this matter with submitting a ruling? This ruling has a clear anti-tax avoidance purpose, and if you submit a ruling to the tax authority in Italy stating that you commit yourself to stay in Italy for more than five years, is also possible to include the capital gains uh, um, arising out in the first five years uh, inside the, the REST non DOM regime. The other exemption can be the cherry picking uh, because it's possible to exclude all the income generated in one or more foreign country for the, from the application of the substitute tax. This is important because there are some countries like Switzerland that uh, do not recognize Italian REST non DOM. Uh, um, 
individual as real Italian taxpayer. So if you want to exclude the income from example, Switzerland, you can avoid to be challenged by Swiss uh, tax authority. We can go to the next slide, please. As I said, uh, we have talked about a ruling. Ruling is a very important thing in the rest non -dom regime because the individual that are interested can contact directly the Italian tax authority asking for an opinion on the existence of the initial condition uh, necessary to enter into the regime. The request, uh, as I said, is made with a ruling in which the individual has to shortly describe uh, his family and work situation and uh, submit a checklist given by the Italian tax authority regarding possible connection to Italy in the last nine out of the 10 tax uh, years. There is possible to submit the ruling um, not uh, before, uh, not after uh, the individual has changed uh, the residency uh, to Italy, but uh, he can submit only before. When uh, the rest non dom regime is requested for the additional family members, the same information for the main applicant must be indicated also for each family member. There is a deadline for the Italian tax authority to respond and uh, is uh, 90 days starting from the receipt of the ruling. If the authority doesn't reply in this deadline, uh, there is uh, the so-called tacit approval of the request. The only exemption is in the case uh, the tax authority asks for additional documents. In this case, uh, the individual has one year to send additional uh, documentation and the tax authority have to respond within 60 days, starting from the days of the, of the additional uh, sending. The reply from the uh, ruling from the Italian tax authority cannot be appealed, but even the, if the response is negative, is binding only for the revenue agency, but not for the applicant. But what does it mean? We have, uh, in this case, two types of scenario. The first scenario is if the ruling response is positive. In this case, uh, the individual can uh, choose the regime with no problem. The response, as I said, is binding for the Italian tax authority. So the Italian tax authority cannot change his opinion and consider you a normal uh, tax resident. It is uh, very important to understand that a positive ruling doesn't mean that the applicant is obliged to opt in the regime or doesn't mean that the, auto uh, that the residency is automatically changed. The applicant is always free to choose if entering in the regime or not. The ruling can be considered just a preliminary test. The second scenario that we have is uh, if the response from the Italian tax authority is negative. In this case, uh, the applicant can uh, anyway choose uh, to opt in the regime, but of course, uh, it is possible that Italian tax authority can open a proceeding. It's not uh, automatic, the opening of this proceeding, but uh, however, it is possible that uh, by submitting some evidence, uh, the applicant can overcome the, the Italian tax authority um, opinion. As uh, you can really understand, uh, the ruling uh, uh, is not mandatory, but uh, it's uh, al always strongly advisable because it gives uh, uh, greater safety to the individual who wants uh, to, uh, to opt in the regime. And uh, also uh, the uh, individual will know the position of the Italian tax authority prior to the change of residency. And as I said, uh, the position of the tax authority cannot be changed. If we, if we, uh, we can go to the next slide, please. We will see how uh, it's possible to opt in in the regime. The option uh, to opt in in the rest non dom regime is made in the tax return related to the following tax year in which the individual has moved the, the residency. That means that if the plan is to benefit uh, from the incentive uh, from 2025, uh, the option must uh, be made in the tax return of the 2026. Uh, as I said, the ruling is not mandatory, so it's possible uh, for the individual to opt to the regime directly in the tax return. But in this case, uh, the applicant has to indicate elements necessary to the verification of the initial condition, at the same one as the ruling. If uh, the tax authority during the routine controls find out uh, the lack of the initial condition to enter into the rest, dom, rest non dom regime, the option will be considered invalid with a huge consequence that is that the individual will be considered as a normal taxpayer. That means uh, that uh, he will have to pay the normal IRPEF rates on all the income generated abroad.
The option for the Resonant Dome regime is tacitly renewed from year from year, and uh, in case the individual wants to extend the uh, regime to family member, uh, this option must be indicated always in the main applicant tax return. We can go to the next slide, please. In this slide, we will we'll see the main benefit of the Resonant Dome regime. Of course, the main and well-known one is the flat tax of 100,000 euro for each year in the, which the, op the option is valid for the income generated outside Italy, regardless the type and the amount of this abroad income. If the regime is extended to family members, the main applicant should pay an additional amount of 20, 25k for each of those. The flat tax, if paid in a single payment and within the deadline for the payment of the income tax that is the end of June, fulfills every tax obligation due in Italy on foreign source income. But uh, besides, besides the fat tax, uh, there are also other additional benefits uh, of the Resonant Dome regime, uh, as uh, you can see in the slide. The first one is that the Resonant Dome individual must not uh, report foreign asset and investment. That means uh, that individuals of the Resonant Dome regime doesn't have to disclose to the Italian tax authority any information about the wealth uh, outside Italy. Resonant Dom individuals are exempted from the payment of EVA, that is uh, the tax due on the value of real estate uh, held abroad by the Italian citizen, and IVAFE, that is the tax due on financial asset and savings account held abroad by the Italian residents. Remittance, remittances are totally exempt, unlike uh, the UK Resonant Dom system, and the Resonant Dom regime are also completely exempted from inheritance and gift taxes but only for assets and rights held outside Italy. It is always possible to opt out the regime without any penalties and or any tax uh, exit tax. This means that the individual can change the tax residency freely. Rest non dom individual can obtain the Italian tax uh, residency certificate that Chiara explained to you all. And the individual can also access to all the Italian anti-double taxation treaty network. In, uh, in the last point is that the Italian Resonant Dom uh, regime works also perfectly fine with uh, corporate structure like holding and trust, but we will speak about these three points uh, later on. As I said, the Resonant Dom regime ends after 15 years without the possibility of any renewal. Uh, once uh, the 15 years, uh, all the foreign income of the individual uh, will become part of its Italian uh, income, and therefore it will be subject to the ordinary IRPEF uh, rules and bracket as seen before. In the next three slides, uh, you will see some uh, uh, practical consideration. We have to start from the uh, point that for the Italian tax authority, the mere fact that an individual declares himself uh, to be a uh, resident uh, resident is registered at the anagrafe, that is the register of a uh, municipality, and pays uh, the flat tax is sufficient to consider the applicant as a true Italian resident. Uh, this means that uh, the Italian resident individual are not uh, required to stay on the Italian soil for the most part of the fiscal year. Of course, uh, it is strongly advisable to maintain strong connection with Italy in order to avoid possible challenges by uh, foreign tax authority. In this slide, you will see uh, some practical consideration and some tips in order to have uh, the most, uh, uh, most evidence as possible in case of a challenge by the Italian tax authority. So if you can skip this slide, the next one and the next one also, so three slides another another one okay uh, it's very important to understand that once the individual has paid for the first year the flat tax he can obtain the tax residency certificate that as chiara has told you uh, has a very strong evidentiary value against the non-italian uh, tax authorities this is a very difficult a very different uh, uh, point uh, between the Italian Resonant Dom regime and other like Monaco that uh, doesn't issue the Italian the um, tax certificate, and uh, of course uh, this uh, uh, tax certificate uh, is make possible also to apply all the rules contained in uh, the tax treaty uh, against double accession signed by Italy 
uh, that uh, uh, Italy, in fact, has signed a lot of treaty with many countries outside around the world, and uh, they are all almost all uh, aligned with the OECD model. And uh, in the next slide, you will see uh, all the countries that Italy uh, has a, a double taxation treaty signed. Um, before uh, ending our journey on the rest non DOM, uh, we, we think that it's important uh, to underline that the rest non DOM regime works uh, perfectly fine with corporate structure, offshore holding, and especially trust. Uh, the next slide uh, talks uh, especially about uh, some key features of the trust in our legal system. Italy uh, fully recognizes uh, trust. In fact, Italy was the second country after the UK to ratify the Hague Converse Convention on Trust. Since then, the trust have entered in the Italian estate planning and the uh, Italian trust that must be governed by the foreign law are, are fully uh, recognized by law even if there is no Italian trust legislation. We also have the circular 34E uh, of uh, the Italian tax authority that is a guideline that's the, uh, for the tax treaty of uh, treatment of every task. Of it, every task. And uh, this circular states, for example, uh, that uh, gift and inheritance tax uh, are due only on the time that uh, the assets are transferred to the, to the beneficiary. So it's possible to transfer assets into a trust with only a payment of 200 euro, regardless the amount and the value of the asset. Another important point of trust is that if a trust attacks uh, the legitimate uh, the rights of the legitimate hires in Italy is not automatically void. In fact, it will continue uh, to have a full effect un unless there is an appeal before the court that is a process usually very long and costly. Uh, therefore, uh, we can say that trust, especially for people outside Italy, for example, UK, that uh, want to uh, want to opt in in the rest non dom regime, uh, can be very useful useful in the pre immigration planning. But uh, we can say that the rest non dom regime, as well as uh, he is the most famous one is not the only special tax regime in Italy. There is another one that is the 7% regime for a pension holder. We will have a brief look at it in the next slide. Thank you. Uh, the special regime for uh, is a 7% flat tax on, on all the foreign income for pensioners, regardless of the nationality, who uh, meet these criteria that have been tax resident outside Italy for at least five years prior before the tax year in which they will become Italian residents, they will transfer their Italian residence in one of the regions of the South Italy and that they have been previously resident in a country which has arrangement for administrative cooperation with Italy. If you opt for the 7% seven, uh, seven flat tax regime and meet uh, all the condition, you will, in, will, you will be not uh, um, liable to Italian tax usual scale rates and you will exempt for a wealth tax associated to foreign asset and reporting obligation. The 7% the regime applies for 10 years and is not, is not, uh, there is not the possibility of a renewal. At the end of the period of 10 years, uh, the taxpayer will uh, go into the normal uh, tax residency and tax uh, rule. And uh, one last point is that the 7% individuals are not subject to the exemption of inheritance tax like the rest non DOM, but uh, they have not the five-year rules on capital gains uh, under shareholdings, uh, uh, qualified shareholdings as the rest non DOM. To conclude uh, my, in my, my speech, I can say that uh, in a context uh, where uh, many European countries are in the process of abolishing the tax regime for high net worth individuals like the uh, United Kingdom and a lot of not EU countries, especially in South America, are introducing wealth tax, uh, Italy remains uh, a safe harbor. In fact, uh, our political outlook uh, is uh, very stable and the abolition of the special tax regime is not in the agenda of any of the major, the, the major political party. Furthermore, the, the introduction of a wealth tax is very unlikely in the middle term. In the last five years, more than 3,000 3, individuals have opted for the Italian rest non dom regime, and the numbers will grow up in this year, especially after UK and Latin America issues. 
Um, which uh, the two regime that I explained, uh, I can say without doubt that Italy remained the main hub for high net worth individual in mobility in Europe. But uh, that's not all, uh, because we will end our webinar with a brief uh, focus on how to invest uh, in Italian real estate. Elisabetta, I will leave the floor to you. Thank you, Luca, for your introduction and good day, everyone. Today, I'm here to discuss uh, the process of buying a real estate in Italy, which presents a highly attractive investment opportunity, but can also be complex to navigate, especially for foreign residents. So, uh, as we don't have a lot of time, I ask you to um, skip ahead for a slide, please. Okay. So, some background information. Uh, it's essential to understand that in order to acquire real estate in Italy, it is mandatory to have uh, an Italian fiscal code, also for foreign individuals. This can easily hast to the Italian tax authority and is a crucial step in the process. Depending uh, then on your personal circumstances, there are additional requirements that can be asked to uh, buy real estate. Uh, for European Union uh, or um, members, uh, so citizens of Euro European Union countries or countries within the European economic area, there are no additional restrictions on purchasing real estate. And this lack of restriction, uh, uh, it's also for individuals uh, who have been stateless for more than three years. For foreign citizens, uh, which are resident in Italy, instead, it is mandatory to have a, a valid resident permit. For foreign citizens who are not residents, then uh, it is a bit more complex because uh, you need uh, to have a reciprocity with the foreign state of a citizenship. Uh, the principle of recipro reciprocity can be confirmed by an international treaty or in a, the absence of a treaty can be uh, also confirmed by um, use. And, uh, Purchasing real estate should be permitted. To verify the reciprocity condition, it can be useful to consult the web page on treaties provided by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. If we can skip ahead. Okay, so the process of buying real estate in Italy is, um, of, as outlined by the Italian law, involves uh, three uh, different steps. The first step is the purchase proposal, uh, which is uh, an irrevo irrevocable offer that sets uh, the fundamental term and condition for future transaction. These terms are negotiated uh, with a prospective vendor or with a real estate agent uh, and must include uh, the identification of parties, uh, so vendor and buyer, the description and the cadastral data of the property, the agreed price uh, and the payment methods, uh, and uh, the amount of the deposit. The second step is the stipulation of a preliminary contract, which happens when the vendor accepts the purchase proposal. This is an agreement that formally obliged the parties to finalize the definitive sale and purchase agreement. And typically the signing of the preliminary contract is also the moment when the buyer transfer the deposit, which can be is usually uh, ranges from a 10% to a 30% of the purchasing price. Uh, this preliminary contract must be in writing to avoid the nullity and uh, must contain all the provision and condition for the definitive sale and purchase agreement. The third and final step is the uh, conclusion of the definitive contract that transfer irrevocably the ownership to the purchasing party. The definitive sale and purchase agreement is a public deed that must be signed in front of a notary public. The notary will also handle the necessary transcription and transfer of information to the competent office for registration purposes. If a foreign buyer does not understand the Italian, the deed must be completed with an official translation into the buyer language. If we can skip. So when it comes to taxation, the tax burden on a real estate in Italy is divided in two kinds of, um, of taxation. The first type is uh, the direct taxes, which are linked with the uh, purchase. These are the uh, registration tax or BIT, the mortgage tax, the cadastral tax, and uh, so on. Uh, the second type involves uh, taxes, uh, which are linked with uh, the property 
property ownership, uh, such as uh, the municipal tax. For non-resident foreign individuals uh, which own a property in Italy, the amount of taxation depends on the, the use of the property. So if the property is not occupied, the, um, the owner must pay the municipal tax uh, with uh, um, um, a reduction of 50% if the non-resident receive a foreign pension in their country of residence. If the property is rented out instead, uh, the resident must declare this income in their tax return. They uh, may choose to rent the property by applying uh, different regimes, uh, as, such as the uh, cedolare secca or uh, uh, a substitute uh, um, 10% in case of an agreed rental or they can choose to apply the ordinary IRPEF tax. In this case, the municipal tax is also uh, mandatory. Uh, the taxation can also vary depending on the type of real estate, so if it's a residential real estate or a commercial property, and from the type of vendor. If the vendor is a private individual, the buyer must pay their registration, cadastral and mortgage taxes. If the vendor is a company, instead, the buyer must also pay VAT as the percentage set by Italian law. Please, uh, can you skip? Next slide. Okay, so uh, when purchasing uh, as a, an individual, it is important to note uh, that uh, this does not uh, automatically grant uh, the, uh, to the buyer the Italian residency. However, in some cases, uh, it can serve as a basis uh, to establish uh, domicile in Italy, which can lead uh, to subsequent tax residency. When buying a property in Italy as an individual, uh, the foreign individual gains uh, the same rights and obligations related to the property as an Italian, an Italian citizen. So if the foreign individuals sell the property after owning it uh, of, uh, for over five years, the uh, capital gain of the future sa uh, sale is not taxable. Additionally, individuals can take advantage of the value price mechanism in which the basis of the real estate taxation is the cadastral value of the property instead of the purchasing price, which is usually lower. Um, furthermore, uh, the foreign individual can access the first home taxation benefit, which involves paying a 2% registration tax instead of a 4% or a 4% VIT instead of a 10%. This benefit, however, uh, applies only if the property is the first one owned in Italy and if the buyer transfers their residence to Italy within the next 18 months. There are also some disadvantages to buying as a foreign individual. And one significant disadvantage is the lack of confidentiality in the buying process and in the ownership records of the real estate. Additionally, future transfer of participation in non-resident companies and entities that derived directly or indirectly from the immovable property may be subjected to taxation. So in the next slide, uh, we'll see instead uh, what are uh, the advantages of buying uh, as a, a trust or a company, local or foreign company. So uh, buying uh, real estate by trust, which are legally uh, recognized in Italy, um, permit uh, a more a better asset preservation, can facilitate uh, the family transitions and allow uh, for uh, long-term planning. Uh, moreover, contributing immovable, immovable property uh, to a trust does not trigger any gift or inheritance taxation. And the uh, taxation becomes relevant only at the moment of the final assignment of the property, the assets uh, in trust to the beneficiaries. When buying from uh, as a local company, the scenario can vary depending on uh, whether the company is uh, um, as I said, local. Uh, one uh, main advantage is the possibility to separate uh, the company asset from the shareholder asset, so maintaining a good level of confidentiality. And additionally, some of the costs can be deducted from the taxation burden. However, uh, the company cannot uh, take advantage of the uh, value mechanism. Um, so the, the taxation burden is calculated on the sale price. For foreign companies, instead of buying in a real estate in Italy can trigger several disadvantages uh, mechanism, in particular when uh, um, the, is, uh, it is it's going to be the site of uh, a commercial um, 
business. If we can skip to the next slide, please. Uh, it is crucial to be aware of some principle of Italian inheritance law to plan for real estate taxation and cessation succession. So uh, inheritance law in Italy is uh, subjected to the EU regulation uh, 2022, which aims to harmonize uh, and uh, provide uh, uniformity above, uh, across member states. The regulation adopts the general rule of habitual residence as the connecting factor to determine the applicable law on succession. The EU regulation is universal in nature and applies also to citizens of non-European Union member states. So, um, if Italian law applies uh, to the succession, uh, the estate is subject to the rule of forced hardship uh, as provided by the Italian Civil Code. Uh, this is applicable to both Italian and foreign properties owner. If the owner uh, dies without a will, the estate is transferred by default to their legal heirs, which includes uh, the spouse or civil union partner, the descendants, ascendants, siblings, and uh, um, as a last resort, uh, other relatives. Instead, uh, with planning uh, uh, for succession with a will, the owner can include other individuals uh, and also de facto partners, uh, non-relatives, uh, and also corporations, charities, uh, or, or other legal entities. However, the will uh, can uh, affect the legitimate quota provided by law to the legitimate heirs, which guarantees them a share of the deceased estate. So for foreign years, so in property in Italy, it is advisable to plan for inheritance with a local will. This makes the testator's wishes clearer and easier to follow, reduces the risk of disputes and uh, related well, to the legitimate quota, and uh, prevents the conflict among the heirs. So we'll move to the last slide. Uh, which uh, um, regards uh, inheritance taxation. So there is no harmonization between the EU, uh, EU member states, uh, so Italian law will apply. For Italian residents, the taxation applies to the entire state following the principle of worldwide taxation. For foreign residents instead, the uh, Italian inheritance tax will apply exclusively to property located in Italy at the time of the succession, following the, the territorial principles. And on this note, uh, I'm finished my speech. Uh, so I thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Elisabetta. Uh, hi, Tan. Uh, I see that there are a uh, few questions. Yes, absolutely, Luca. And I believe we have, just looking at the timer, a little bit over, but if you want to select- We will uh, address this question very briefly because uh, uh, at least for uh, these three for, uh, first question, uh, it's not a long, uh, a long answer. Uh, the main, the first one is how do you shift the, your tax residency to Italy to get the benefits of the rest non regime? And uh, as a, as a, I, in, I told uh, in uh, my, in my speech, uh, is a pretty easy process because you only have uh, to submit an Italian uh, tax. Uh, um, in, in, the, in the Italian tax uh, return of uh, the year uh, after you have your, red, your residency in Italy, you have only to opt in in the regime. This is just like a tip on the Italian, uh, on the Italian tax return. And uh, if you don't have uh, uh, make a ruling before, uh, you also have uh, to submit uh, the checklist uh, provided by the Italian tax authority. The second question that regards my speech uh, is, uh, is the seven tax percent uh, tax uh, only on retirement pensions or does it apply to worldwide income if it's not subject to regular tax rates? The seven percent tax regime is for all income generated outside Italy for pensioners. So it's possible that the pensioners have, uh, I don't know, uh, all types of uh, foreign income and uh, all uh, this type of foreign income will fall in the 7% uh, tax regime. The last question we are going to address is uh, for Chiara. I will uh, read uh, the question. Uh, would uh, the transfer to Italy of the proceeds uh, of the sale of a property outside Italy be taxable in Italy if an individual is an Italian tax resident? Um, it would be taxable in case uh, there will be any capital gain on the transfer of, uh, of the, on, on the sale of the property. Um, and uh, uh, the, 
after the, the transfer of the, the, of the of the property there would not be need to report uh, the real estate anymore uh, in the taxation and so there won't be any more uh, real estate income uh, corresponding in uh, a taxable well i think that's all then perfect thank you luca well all i have left to do is to thank our wonderful panel for their insights and and for answering our questions stefan luca chiara and elisabetta it's been a pleasure to spend an hour in your time and to hear from you i hope we can do it again soon and thank you also to our audience for being with you any questions that you have please do reach out to the firm we'll be in touch with their contact information and any questions that you want to elaborate on please do reach out but for now, have a lovely rest of your day, evening, and I will hopefully see you all soon. Goodbye.